Hello and uh, welcome to my talk, uh, KSMA Breaking can Android Control Isolation and uh, Routing with MMM Features, which basically will be focused on the security of Android Kernel. First, uh, is a brief introduction. My name is Wang Yong. I'm a security engineer in Pandora Lab of Ali Security. Currently, I focus on Android vulnerability hunting and uh, exploitation. Okay, here is the agenda. For today, I will first briefly describe the present situation of Android routing. You can say that routing the units of Android devices is becoming more and more challenging. Then I will detail a new routing solution, Revent. For Android 7, the old public uh, exploitation technique works well. However, those cannot defect Android 8 due to the new mitigations. Next, I will introduce a new kernel exploitation technique named the kernel space mirroring attack. Short for KSMA, it's an awesome exploitation technique which enables an attacker to access the kernel virtual address from user mode without any syscalls. So it's very easy to bypass both PX and PM mitigations. And the following, I will detail a new routing solution, CP router based on a very interesting debug uh, interface. I will demonstrate how to construct a 100% renewable exploit chain using KSMA exploitation technique. So in the beginning I will show you some very interesting code. In the main function the code tries to disable SA Linux and uh, try to patch a syscall. The most interesting point is that all of them are color virtual address. As a Linux programmer, this code can never appear in the editor. But uh, how it, if it works? Under certain conditions, the code can work well. Let me show you the demo. So the following, I will detail how it works and uh, how to break uh, Android kernel isolation. So let's start. There are two common ways to gain root privilege. The first one is to compromise the kernel through drivers. You can find many vulnerabilities in drivers listed in Android Bunity every month. However, to access a driver, you first uh, need to compromise the associated privilege process. It's uh, another hard work. Although some universal drivers like a bundler can be reached uh, directly, there are fewer vulnerabilities. The other one is using a vulnerability in generic Cisco. It's attractive, but it's difficult to discover a vulnerability. The pri privilege process tend to have fewer vulnerabilities than drivers. With the most strict AC Linux policies enforcing, less resources can be accessed by a specific or privileged process. And due to the e exact MAM policy, the shared code cannot be mapped and, de and uh, executed directly, so many LP or GLP gadgets are required. Google has done a great job. Many attack surfaces have been reduced. In 2016, the powerful subsystem have, has been removed, and uh, only a small wide list of socket L controls are uh, available to applications. Now, some syscalls are not reachable from untrusted domain application by secure computing filter. There are some new mitigations introduced in Android 8. The first one is the privileged access never. For a non time redirecting a kernel pointer to user space is a common way to bypass PX mitigation. But now a new exploitation technique is required. Without the KSLR mitigation, hard coded addresses of gadgets are enough for a root solution. But now for Android 8 kernel, 4.4 and newer, leaking the kernel slider is required. 
Post the need to read only memory mitigation reduces the writable memory. That means fewer kernel pointers can be overwritten, make exploitation harder. The last mitigation aims to help developers support and fix bugs during testing, so there will be fewer vulnerabilities in drivers. You can see that uh, and routing is becoming more and more challenging, but uh, it's still impossible. Uh, it's still possible, sorry. <laughs> Let me detail the first uh, routing solution, Revent. Revent is based on CVE 2016. 7533, this vulnerability is discussed as a bug by my colleague Lin Lei, Le, another department. At that time, uh, the public disclosure was uh, released in August last year. Mo and uh, most uh, of Android devices are shipped with kernel 3.18 to 4.04, so this vulnerability does impact Android. Since most of devices are 34 bit, whether it's exploitable or not is unknown. It's a use of vulnerability due to risk condition. When winning the race, some data of the last slab optical can be overwritten. Since it's associated with the relame and the notification event syscalls, this routine solution is named as a revenge. This, the vulnerability exists in this vulnerable callback. The first, to trigger the callback, you would, you first request to add a monitor to one field with some specific actions like in access. When those actions triggered, this callback will be invoked. At the point one, calculate length length and the allocation size. At the point two, the problem uh, allocate a buffer for the event, and uh, at the point of three, copy the name to the buffer. The problem is that a uh, contact switch can happen between point one and point three. That means this field can be renamed, and the length of the field name is outdated. Here is the sequence diagram. Three to one triggers the notification and calculates the length. Then contact switch. Three to two relames the field. The old name is freed by RCU callback. Subsequently, the freed buffer is refilled with the payload data and the contact switch again. The allocated buffer is not enough for the long row bytes now, so a heap overflow can occur. Here is the associated heap layout. First, the field name is composed of 200 A. The size of uh, allotified event information structure is 48 bytes. So the length of the buffer is 249 bytes. Then the field is renamed and the old name is freed and refilled. So the last object will be partially overwritten during string copy. To exploit this bug, there are two main problems required to solve. The first one is to find a proper vector object. The object must have a kernel pointer in the head, and after string copy triggered, a zero byte is added at the end, so it requires the object to be immune to this side effect. Another problem is the function. The field name, notification event, payload data, and the vector objects are all allocated in the same heap. And the victim object is required to allocate the less to the vulnerable event. After searching kernel data structures, I decided to compromise the pipe subsystem to gain arbitrary kernel memory overwriting. The reason is the time of check to time of use feature can make exploitation easier. When reading a pipe field with read with Cisco, it first allocates a buffer, copies LVX to the kernel, and uh, checks the boundary. Then the pipe reader callback will be invoked. If no data is available, the reading thread will block in the, this callback. When some data is written in the pipe, the reading thread will be woken up and continue to copy data to the buffer. You can see there is no other boundary check during copy. So LVX are the ideal 
weighted object, since LV length can be set to a small value like 8, overwriting the LV based to a kernel address does not bring any side effect. That means no cropped data are required to recover, and here almost the arbitrary write ability is gained. But there are some limitations. If a target kernel address contains zero bytes, it can't be written. Fortunately, there are many ideal core bank pointers in kernel data section. Since the only vivacity object is not enough for exploitation, lots of reading threads are required, but the number of the threads is limited. Here is the ideal heap layout during exploiting. First, uh, spring nodes of L vector objects in the heap. Then, free the half of the L vector objects and shape the heap. Next, uh, spawn some threads to race. When running the race, the LV base of the first L vector is pointed to the target uh, kernel address. And now we can read this kernel address. In fact, there are many bu free the buffer holes in the heap. Before springing the L vector objects, those holes are required to fill because a notification event can stay in the kernel until reading. The event object is a proper candidate. After filling holes with events, slab allocator will return a new empty list for L vector objects. When two same actions are triggered subsequently, Notification subsystem will merge the two events into one event and free the second event object directly. So when filling free the buffer holes, two different actions can be used alternatively, avoiding merging. During racing, the freed L vector buffers are not enough since lots of L events are allocated. Merging the events can help improve the success rate. A public method to bypass PXM mitigation and gain arbitrary read write ability is hijacking check flags kernel pointer. Since the lower 32 bytes of X0 register are controllable, the simple GOP chain can be easily constructed. For Android 7 and the lower devices, the exploitation steps are straightforward. First, the preferred resource like uh, GOP GM pipe field descriptors and uh, notification monitor and uh, fill the buffer holes of the heap. Then, spawn reading threads and shape the heap with L vector objects. Let's uh, spawn read threads and do check in the main thread. If winning the race, the arbitrary read read ability is gained. The last step is override the UID disable as a Linux and uh, spawn a root shell. But uh, for Android 8 devices like uh, PX2, the game rule has changed. The KSLR mitigation is enabled in kernel 4.4. To execute the GOP gadgets, the kernel slide must be leaked first. And the PM mitigation is fully implemented, so the data for GOP chain should be written into the kernel. To calculate the kernel slide, leaking a kernel function or data pointer is enough. The data of an event buffer can be read through notification monitor field descriptor, so springing a special kind of object instead of payload data may leak kernel address information. Since the field, the name field is at the offset 16 of external name structure, it requires this special object has such a pointer. Unfortunately, no such object was found. After a few days, I decided to find an object only has a kernel pointer at that offset. Then I found the old friend, notification event has the I load pointer and I load the objects are allocated in another heap. And the I load structure has the I load, uh, I load operation callback, so there are two stages to leak, uh, to calculate the curl slide. At stage one, use the invent object to spring. When winning the race, it can leak a kernel heap pointer. Like a previous exploitation steps, read the I/O field of this I load at stage two. 
Another PM mitigation for Android 8 device is also required to bypass. With PM enabled, the GLP chain to bypass PXM mitigation mentioned previously can't work. Here, only the 32 bytes of X0 register are controllable, and uh, the PM mitigation will block the access to a user address. So another GLP or GLP chain is required to bypass both PX and PM mitigations. It's not difficult to find a chain that the X0 register is fully controllable. The problem is that writing additional payload into the kernel for GLP chain increases the crash rate during exploiting. The CVE 2017 Six four discovered by me in 2016 can help solve this problem. It's bound with the bundle driver and it can leak a kernel address filled with any payload data reliably. But my goal is only one vulnerability used, no LP or GLP chain required. And both PX and PM mitigations fully bypassed. To achieve this goal, let me introduce Use a new exploitation technique, uh, curl space mirroring attack. This is the classical page table layout of uh, Linux. There are three separate levels of uh, the page table page global directory, page middle directory, and the page table entry. When a uh, process access a virtual address, the virtual address will be broken up into its component parts for navigating those three tables. In fact, the translation follow is automatically completed by memory management unit. The address, of, the address translation of ARMv8 is complicated. For Android, the translation follow is shown in the right figure. The page size is 4 kilobyte granule and 512 gigabyte virtual addresses are both for user and the kernel. And the three levels of translation tables are configured. So the translation follow is starting at level one. The base address, addresses of translation tables are saved in TTBRX registers. And the TTBRX selection is given by six, six bits 63 of the virtual address. Here are the descriptor formats for level 0, level 1, and level 2. There are two types of formats, block and uh, table. If the level 1 lookup or, or level, the level 2 lookup returns a block descriptor, then the translation table work complaints at that level. Otherwise, the last level lookup is required. That means a block descriptor is used to describe a memory region with the same attributes. This descriptor format is only for level three, the last level. Here is the general view of address translation. You can see that if a block descriptor returned, the translation will come in immediately. For Android, there is no level zero table. There are some attribute fields for both block and the page descriptors. The unprivileged execute never or execute never beta determines the region is executable or not in the same translation regime. The PXM beta determines whether region is executable at the exception, exception level one. The AP2 bits determine whether the region can be read or written or both. Here are the four combinations of, of permissions for exception one and exception zero translation region. The double zero combination can be used for kernel data region, and the zero one is for kernel text region, but the other two combinations seem useless. A kernel address could never be accessed by a user process, and for a user address, the PAN mitigation will block the access at the exception level one. And the other one combination attracts my attention. It can provide a way to access a kernel virtual address at the exception zero directly. 
That means both the PX and the PM mitigations can be easily bypassed with this ability. But after analyzing the curl page table of some Android devices, the zero one combination has never appeared. The general way to modify the attributes of a given kernel address has three steps. First, uh, look up each level of the page tables, then find the address of the associated page table entry, and finally set the zero one combination. To work the page table, the arbitrary read read ability is required. If you already have this ability, of writing the UID and the spawning a root shell is straightforward, the game is over. But do you really need to work the page table? Suppose a phone with 3 gigabyte RAM without the KSL ARM mitigation enabled, a uh, commonly out of level 1 table is shown in the figure. There are three valid entries. Since the access, access permission of the te kernel test region is different from the kernel data region. So the first valid uh, entry returns a table descriptor while working. Usually this uh, memory region is invalid, so the entry is empty. So Suppose there is a block descriptor for this region. The output address of this block descriptor is pointing to the first, the first one gigabyte physical memory, and the access permission bits are zero, are zero one. Normally, this uh, physical address can be accessed from this kernel virtual address, but now it can also be accessed from this kernel virtual address. And the most important thing is that this virtual address can be read or written at exception level zero. That means no read write primitives are required to access the kernel. The kernel isolation has been broken. This is the principle of KSMA exploitation technique. To add a special block descriptor, you need to know the start virtual address of a level one table. In the Linux kernel, swapper page director is the kernel page global director. So for the kernel mirroring base, the virtual address of the table entry can be calculated by this simple expression. And uh, with this formula, the mirroring kernel virtual address can be easily converted. With the KSLR mitigation enabled, the only difference is that it requires the kernel slide to calculate the real virtual address of swapper page director. The other things are same. Here are the explo exploitation steps for Android 8. At stage 1 and stage 2, link a kernel heap and the data point pointers, calculating the kernel slide as mentioned previously. At stage 3, First, uh, prepare a special block descriptor and uh, calculate the uh, associated uh, entry address. Then, spawn race threads. After winning the race, disable SA Linux and uh, patch a syscall from user mode. Finally, invoke the patched syscall and uh, spawn a root shell. With this KSMA exploitation technique, you can see there is no IOP GLP chain used, and uh, both PX and PM mitigations are fully bypassed. Also, the post you need to read only memory constraint can also be bypassed. For our, for ARM v7, this exploitation technique can also work well. The section descriptor is very similar to the block descriptor of ARM v8. Meanwhile, the combination 01 also allows access and color memory at exception level, level 0. Since the idea is very similar, I will not discuss it again. So here is the demo.
So let me detail another routing solution, CP router. CP router is based on CP in 2017, the low, the low files 18.3. This vulnerability affects large numbers of concur based Android devices fixed in April last year. The CP access driver enables an uh, attacker to access CPU registers like uh, TTBRX. It first uh, attracts my attention in September 2016. The exploitation for Android 7 is finished uh, in November. Since the only root user has the writing ability, the exploitation requires another vulnerability. For this vulnerability, its famous name is Dirty Cow, disclosed in October 2006. And lots of approval of concepts can be found in GitHub. I will not uh, cover here. In summary, for Android, it can be used to, uh, to modify the fields of system partition, temporarily hijack a init process, and uh, fork a root process. For Android 6, the, this root process can spawn a root shell. For, but however, for Android 7, the rules are changed. The SE Linux policies prohibit in the process reloading the policies. That means you can't defeat SE Linux. Without a domain transition, this root process can't execute other batteries. And the process can't allocate RWX attributes memory for shell code due to the exact, exact memory policy. So the first problem is bypassing exact memory policy. Since the fields of the system partition can be modified by Dirty Cow, the bypassing steps are first uh, write the shell code into a binary of system partition like uh, pin 6 and uh, map the field into uh, Rx attributes uh, memory. Through the CPU driver, an attacker can modify the TTBR1 register and uh, redirect the physical address of a PGD4 kernel to another address. That means there is a chance to access the kernel test or data. To modify the TTBR1 register, it requires to construct wall level page tables. Without those page tables, modifying the TTBR1 register can lead to the kernel crash. So this problem must be solved. So does it really need wall level page tables? For ARM V8 16-4-bit, the answer is no. A block descriptor can be used to describe a memory region directly. So only level one table is required to construct. The size of level one table is four kilobytes. One physical page is enough for it. To avoid uh, bringing additional core crash, the physical page should be controllable. Considering the VDS of physical page is directly mapped into both user and uh, kernel space, the physical address is known and uh, can be modified by Dirty Cow, so it's the best candidate. Here is the initial idea of uh, exploitation steps. At stage one, first uh, prepare the kernel block descriptors and the share code. Then write the shell code for stage two in a binary of system partition. Let's uh, write the descriptors and the shell code for stage one into VDSO page. And uh, trigger an event to make the hijacked init process spawn a root process. And the shell code for stage two is mapped into memory and uh, executed by this process. At stage two, the shell code first uh, back up the value of TDBR1 register and write the physical address of VDSO page into it. Then it disable SA Linux and write the backup value into TDBR1 register and finally spawn a root shell. Unfortunately, the crash rate is very high. After analyzing several logs, I found the root cause. The physical pages allocated by VMalloc are not uh, continuous. That means the associated kernel virtual addresses are not mapped directly. Those addresses can't be described by a single block descriptor, so the TTBR1 register can't be modified. To avoid the kernel crash, modifying the TTBR0 register is another choice. The main idea to improve the success rate is uh, 
map the physical page of a PDD4 kernel into this root process and uh, add a craft block descriptor to the PGD. After testing, the success rate is 100%. This uh, is the initial st state. So after modifying the TDBR0 register, you can see the PGD4 kernel is mapped into user space. Here are the exploitation steps. Stage one is the same as the previous. At stage two, first uh, read the value of TTBR0 and uh, TTBR1 registers. Then craft and uh, write two block uh, descriptors into VDSO page. One is for kernel PGD and uh, the other one is for share code after switching the TTBR0 register. Let's uh, write the physical address of VDSO page into TTBR0 register. Now the kernel PGD is mapped into user space. Add a craft block descriptor to kernel PGD and uh, write the backup value into TTBR0 register. Finally, disable SA Linux and uh, patch the Cisco with KSMA and uh, invoke the patch the Cisco and spawn a root shell. So I have prepared the video, but I plan to show you another way to get a root shell. So this code, uh, what? Sorry. Yeah. This, this code I have shown you at the beginning. So I first, uh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, first I compile and, uh, I push the binary into the phone. Whoa. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I plunge the phone. <coughs> so So I run the binary. So you can see the process crashed. The crash log shows the process tries to access a color virtual address. So and I run the CP router without uh, spawning a root shell. So here we is a still root user and uh, and the uh, SC Linux is still enforcing. So I run the binary. Yeah. You can see a root shell spawn and uh, the SE Linux is disabled. So, <coughs> in my presentation, a new reliable routing exploitation technique KSMA is introduced. The two routing solutions are detailed. Nowadays, and the routing is becoming more and more difficult and challenging. Uh, but it's still possible. Okay. Here are the references. So, any questions? Okay, thanks. <laughs>